So when I first started to learn to code, I had one question in my head the whole time, and that was what language should I actually start with, right? Because if you have a look around, you Google, you go on Reddit, there's all these different opinions on what language you should start with. You know, I researched for a pretty long period of time, and needless to say, I was more confused than ever. And then the more you keep looking, there's tens of other options, right? There's C Sharp, there's Ruby, there's Go, there's Java, there's Swift. And suddenly you're not just trying to choose between two different programming languages, right? You're like staring at this ocean of different options and you really, you don't even have a map. What I really needed was someone to just come in and say, listen, Jake, I've got you. I'm going to sit down with you. Here's exactly what matters. Here's what doesn't matter. And here's where to start. And that is essentially what this video is about. It isn't some like deep technical like manual. And you're not going to get some history lesson on the invention of Python or anything like that or some crazy breakdown of like a JavaScript runtime engine. No, I just want to keep it simple, right? Instead, I want to give you my honest kind of clear side by side guide on the two different languages most people are choosing choosing between today, that's Python and JavaScript. And so in this video, you're gonna learn who shouldn't start with either language, why it matters to choose just one language at the beginning. I'm also gonna explain what kind of person thrives in like Python, what kind of person thrives using JavaScript. I'm gonna then give you my personal verdict after trying both and learning both. And finally, where I would start if I had to do it all again today. So by the end of this video, my hope is that you have a clear understanding of which programming language you should learn. You'll get some of my recommendations that's hopefully going to put you on the right track so that you know what you should be doing, where you should be going from here and how you should be progressing in your coding learning journey. There's a lot to cover, let's get into it. So if you've made it this far into the video, you're probably already convinced that either Python or JavaScript are both solid options to learn to code. And they are, if you're a beginner, they are both solid options to learn to code. So you might be thinking, well, why not learn them both at the same time, right? It's a fair question. On the surface, it probably even sounds a lot more efficient. You know, twice the skills, twice the flexibility, twice the job opportunities, right? And I was exactly like you, right? I thought, okay, I would try to learn both at the beginning. But here's the thing, right? Trying to learn two programming languages at once is like trying to learn French and Spanish by watching a movie that switches between both every single scene. You'll pick up on a few words, yes, maybe even recognize some patterns, but you'll constantly be guessing, second guessing, and eventually just forgetting. Essentially, at the beginning, if you do that, it's going to be very difficult for you to ever retain anything, right? So in the early stages of learning to code, really depth beats breadth every time. What you need most isn't exposure to more syntax or more options, it's just clarity, right? You need to get familiar with how one language thinks. You need to build momentum, build projects, and have those kind of early wins. You need to practice debugging and problem solving without getting distracted by another like ecosystem. And this is where choosing one language helps you build that mental muscle. You're not just learning how to write code, right? You're learning how to think like a developer. And the great thing is that thinking skill, it is actually language agnostic, meaning that if you learn to think like a developer in one language, it will transfer very well into another language. And it's because programming languages share more in common than they don't, right? Variables, functions, loops, conditionals, they exist in both. So concepts like scope, data type, error handling, and logic, they're all universal. So once you understand how to code in one language, picking up a second one becomes more about translation than memorization. In fact, once you've built a few things in one language, your brain starts noticing patterns everywhere, even in languages you've never touched before. So the goal isn't to avoid learning both. The goal is to master one well enough that learning the second one feels easy. You know those videos on YouTube where it says like learn Java in one hour or learn Ruby in one hour? That's actually possible if you know another language inside out. It's actually possible to learn a whole new language once you understand the syntax of another language from the language that you've just learned. So it's important to go deep into one language. And so let's talk about what happens if you don't commit, right? If you don't commit to one language, if you bounce between Python tutorials one day and JavaScript tutorials the other day, you just end up in the worst possible place. You have this real surface level knowledge of the language. You got no confidence in it, right? You won't know how to build things in it properly. And that is problematic, especially if you are really trying to learn to program. The people that make the fastest progress with coding are really just the ones that are focused to cross the first milestone. And that is, to really learn one language. So if you're just starting out, my advice to you is come at it with the mindset of, I'm just going to stick with one language for 30 to 90 days or 30 to 60 days. And I'm just gonna build at least one thing I'm proud of within that particular language. And that's it. That should just be the whole entire plan. Just focus on picking one 
programming language. And we're gonna get more into how you can do that later on in the video, but that should be the plan when you are first starting out. So now that you know that picking one language is the smartest thing that you could possibly do, because you know that, right? I mean, we just literally went through it. So that is the smartest thing you possibly do. Next, we're gonna break down, you know, who should start with Python, who should start with JavaScript. And then by the end, you'll have sort of a clear sense as to which one fits your goals, your learning style, and the kind of software developer that you want to become. Okay, so let's start with Python, right? Who is the best person to learn Python? So Python is obviously one of the best first programming languages you could possibly learn. It's very clean. It's extremely readable, right? It's used by some of the biggest companies in the world. We're talking about obviously Google, Netflix, even NASA, and countless startups as well. Even though it's beginner friendly, that doesn't mean it's the best fit for every beginner. So let's break it down. So Python really is a problem solvers language, right? If you're the kind of person who likes solving puzzles, you enjoy kind of tinkering with spreadsheets or automating like boring stuff. And if you are someone who likes to work sort of more behind the scenes, building systems that kind of do things, then Python is probably the choice that you should be looking at, right? It's often used in roles where there's more things like logic, structure, and analysis use more than kind of visual design. And if that's your comfort zone, Python will feel very natural very, very quickly. Also, if you are mildly curious about things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, web scraping, automating repetitive tasks, then really Python is the obvious choice for you. Python has libraries specific for this kind of stuff, right? Pre-built code packages, essentially, for almost everything. So you've got pandas and numpy for data. You've got skidic learn for machine learning. You've got beautiful soup for web scraping. You've got others for spreadsheets. You've got others for deep learning. And you've also got Flask and Django for web development as well. And so the great thing about Python is if you are interested in doing any of this stuff, the libraries are available to you. They're all open source. They're very well documented and they're supported by a massive community community of developers that you know, uh, let's be eager to help you. And so with that in mind, who is someone that shouldn't start with Python, right? As amazing as Python is, Python isn't perfect for every single goal. If you're mainly interested in getting into things like designing websites, right? Building user interfaces, creating like flashy animations, learning what makes the web tick essentially, then Python might feel too abstract and dry at first. And the reason is you won't see your work visually come to life the same way you would with JavaScript in the browser. So if you are a visual learner who needs feedback right away, JavaScript might be the better first step. And so just to quickly recap, you should explore Python if you want to get into data, automation, AI, or backend logic. If you love solving problems or building useful tools, and you want a beginner friendly language with a huge community, and you don't really care about flashy visuals as much or web interfaces. And especially if you're in a non-coding role at the moment and you wanna build your tech skills, if that sounds like you, or even mostly like you, Python is an excellent first language. But here's the thing, what if you're also the kind of person that loves design, right? You love to create things. You love to put websites into the browser. You wanna design user experiences. You love the idea of building interactive web apps, even building mobile applications. If that's the case, JavaScript actually might be your calling. So let's explore a little bit of that next. So if Python is this thing that sort of sits in the background and works behind the scenes, JavaScript is kind of that loud, fast talking person on the front lines, right? It's what gives websites their personality. It's the reason that buttons, they respond, you know, pages update without refreshing and apps that feel really smooth to work with, right? So if you've clicked a drop down menu, if you filled out an online form or if you've watched a search result appear instantly on a page, JavaScript is most likely doing the work. So is it the right language for you? Well, let's find out. JavaScript is a fantastic fantastic language if you like seeing immediate results. So in Python, you might write code that cleans a data set, for example, or it automates a spreadsheet, but you won't necessarily see it, right? In JavaScript, your work lives on the screen. Buttons click, right? Animations move, you know, forms respond, pages update in real time. It is incredibly motivating when you're learning, when you see what you're creating and you can actually interact with it on the page. You type a few lines of JavaScript, you refresh your browser, and then boom, it sort of pops up and there's something happening there and you can then something that you can work with. And so if you're someone who learns best by seeing things change, you also like playing with design, like right? with movement or with interfaces, you wanna build something people can use right away, then JavaScript is probably what you should be looking at. And so with JavaScript, there are generally three major paths into tech. So there's front end developer, which really focuses on everything the user sees, like the HTML, CSS, the JavaScript in the browser. Then you've got back end, and that handles the behind the scenes logic, database servers and APIs, and you can still 
do this with JavaScript. And then there's Full Stack Developer, which does essentially both the front end and the back end. And so if you want to become a front end or full stack developer, JavaScript is your core language hands down. And the reason is because with technologies like Node.js, you can use JavaScript in the back end too. You don't have to use Python in the back end, you can use JavaScript, which means you can build entire web applications using just one language across the board, which is pretty cool. And JavaScript is becoming so much more versatile now that it's not even used in just websites anymore. You can use JavaScript or its cousin TypeScript to build mobile applications. You can create desktop apps. You can develop browser extensions. You can even interact with blockchain tools and smart contracts. And it's even so versatile as well that you can start to use JavaScript now for things like machine learning and also AI automation. So if you do like the idea of learning one language that can follow you into multiple directions, JavaScript is a hugely flexible choice. But if you learn JavaScript, you do have to learn HTML, right? You do have to learn CSS because these two things, they help with the structure of the web page and the design of the layout. And you will have to learn things like APIs, right? How to pull data from other websites or other databases. And you'll also have to learn some frameworks that use JavaScript, things like React, Vue, Svelte. These tools help you to organize your code and to build dynamic apps. So JavaScript really is just kind of a mix of creativity and logic. And if that combination excites you, JavaScript might be the perfect starting point. And so on the other side, if you are someone that doesn't enjoy working with design or layout, you want to drive straight into data science, you know, AI or automation, then JavaScript might not be the right path for you, right? It might feel messy or frustrating at first. And its syntax, to be honest, can be a little bit more chaotic than Python. And it has a lot of gotchas in there that kind of trip up beginners as well. Things like undefined, right? NAND, so not a number or scope kind of weirdness with JavaScript. And it does require a basic understanding of HTML and CSS to do anything visual. So you have to learn two other programming languages that are not very difficult to learn to start using JavaScript as well, which kind of adds to the learning curve, right? So if you're more logic driven than visual and you want to automate and analyze rather than design and build interfaces, Python might be the smoother starting point. All right, so we've compared both, right? We've looked at each language, what it's for, what it's great at, where they show up in the tech world. And so here's the part that I give you my honest answer to the question, should I learn Python? or JavaScript first. Now, my answer based on my experience is to start with JavaScript. And let me tell you why. So when I first started learning to code, I did bounce around a little bit, you know, from JavaScript tutorial to Python, you know, a little bit of HTML, CSS there. But when I, when I finally committed to learning JavaScript and I really gave it my full attention, that's when I started to make the most progress with learning to code. And the reason is for me is because with JavaScript, I could see what I was building, right? I wasn't just writing code. I was able to create things on the browser. You know, I could create little text animations, right? I could change the color of things. I could make pages react to my clicks, whatever I decided I wanted it to, to do. That kind of feedback gave me a lot of momentum. In the early days, it, you know, it's all about building momentum. And so when you start to see some progress with learning a new skill, whatever skill you're learning, then you want to stay focused in what you're learning. You want to stay curious. You want to stick around. You want to build more. And so this is essentially why I recommend JavaScript as the first language for most beginners. It's because it's visual. You can see what your code is doing. It's responsive. You know, you can change a line of code, you can refresh it, and you can see this instant result. And the great thing is it gives you the power to build things that you can share with people. Like I created some apps at the beginning that I would send to my friends and family, like little games, little quizzes, whatever it was. And it was really fun. And that kind of instant gratification, I feel as a beginner keeps you in the game. It's what keeps you moving forward, even before you understand what you're really doing, but that's okay, right? It's all about getting that instant gratification and that momentum when you first start. And that's why I think JavaScript is one of the best languages to do that. Early on, your job isn't necessarily to master everything. Your job is to build confidence in whatever you're learning. And for me, and for a lot of new programmers, JavaScript helps you do that a lot faster. Now you might completely disagree with me and that's fine. It's just my experience and what I have found to be the most beneficial. I did start learning Python at the beginning, and yes, obviously it's interesting, but the fact that I could use JavaScript to do things with, to build in the browser, it just helped me so much more in my programming journey. But here is something that I didn't expect, right? Once I got comfortable enough with JavaScript, with obviously the concepts like variables, loops, functions, conditionals, objects, all that sort of thing, Python just made way more sense, right? That leap across to Python after you learn JavaScript is so much easier once you know JavaScript, or e even once you know one particular language, right? So I'm sure if you start with Python, it'd be the same if you move over to JavaScript as well. And so what happens is once you get comfortable enough in one language, you're not learning how to code anymore. I was just learning a new way to express what I already knew in a different language. So switching from JavaScript to Python, 
it felt like switching dialects, not starting over. Because obviously the hard part is not the syntax, right? It's just, it's not the syntax. It's thinking like a developer. Once you do that in one language, the second one comes a lot faster and a lot easier. Now, after all this, you're probably like, oh, okay, great. This is exactly what I'm gonna do. But I want you to know that I'm not here to necessarily convince you that JavaScript is better because it's not, right? If you're someone that is obsessed with data, you, you know, you're fascinated by AI, you like the idea of automating things, you know, writing little scripts to get things done, then Python might be the right way forward. That's why I wanted to go into the depth that I did earlier. So you could make a decision based on your goals, your style and your curiosity. And like I said, if you do disagree with me, that's fine, right? It's a sign that you are starting to develop your own instincts in this. And that's a sign of someone who is already ready to learn, right? And so let me just wrap this up with the most important lesson that I've learned after you know, learning to program. And that is that the best programming language, really the best programming language, is the one that you stick with long enough. I know I've given my recommendation here, but Python or JavaScript doesn't matter as much as you think. The real risk isn't choosing the wrong one. The real risk is bouncing between all these different languages, never going deep enough to actually understand one, to build in one, to debug in one, to learn one. So like I said, the action plan now is pick one, commit it for 30 to 60 days, build some projects in it, then reassess and see how you go. I personally think you're gonna love JavaScript, but hey, you might like Python. That's completely up to you. I, I'm learning Python now as well, and it's a great language too. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, you got some value from it, and you're able to make a decision as to which programmer language you want to start and stick with. I will see you in the next one.